In this video, video number eight, what I want to talk about is the forces acting on a block on an inclined plane. Now, when we think about this on an inclined plane, we're going to have to choose a coordinate system that's convenient to us. The one that tends to be convenient in this situation is actually one where the y and x are oriented like so. So when we look at the block here, it really has two forces acting on it at a minimum. We have a weight force, which goes straight down, and we have a normal force, which remember isn't always the opposite of the weight force. Here's a situation where it's not. The normal force is, however, always perpendicular to the surface. What's going to be important is that we look at the components of this weight force that are parallel to the ramp, and that are perpendicular to the ramp. Now, you don't want to draw components of a vector on the same free body diagram as the vector itself. Uh, if this was an AP question, they, they could actually take off for that. So let me try to draw this separately. Let's say that the weight force went down like this, and we had a ramp that was inclined like so. And it was inclined at some angle theta. Let me use a finer point theta so that I can make a finer point. As we look at this weight force, if I draw dashed lines, you can see that there is a part of the weight force. So if this is the weight force, there's a part that's perpendicular and there's a part that's parallel. So this side would be like the weight force perpendicular, and this would be the weight parallel. So the question is, well, what's this angle? And it turns out that it's theta. And I want to prove this to you two ways. One is just sort of a hand wavy way, which is that if this theta got really, really small, like this got flat, well, then the weight force is perpendicular to the surface. Now, sort of a more rigorous way would be to say that this is perpendicular, so the weight vector is perpendicular to the bottom of the ramp. So if that's 90 degrees and this is theta, this is 90 degrees minus theta. Well, if this is 90 degrees and this is 90 minus theta, well then that must be theta. So let's look at the perpendicular component. Here's where it gets just a little bit different. Compared to where this angle is, if you actually look at the angle in the diagram, not just rely on what you normally think of as y and x components, this is actually an adjacent side. And this side, where the parallel component is, is actually an opposite side. So that means the weight force perpendicular is the magnitude of the weight force, mg, times the cosine of the angle. So even though we think of this as a y component, it's really times cosine of theta given the geometry, given the way the theta is drawn. Similarly, for the weight force parallel, it's going to be mg times the sine of theta. Now in the future, you don't need to re-derive this every time, but you do want to keep in mind that anytime you have something on a ramp, the component parallel to it, again, the weight force parallel is always going to be mg times the sine of theta, and the weight force perpendicular is going to be mg times the cosine theta. So I tend to think of it as well, normally the y component is times the sine, and the x component is times the cosine, but a ramp sort of uh, puts us a little off balance and switches it. It's kind of silly. It's just the way I like to think about it. Uh, so those are the components. So that's number one. Number two on the agenda is talk about friction on an inclined plane. Now, if you look at this, if I can draw, let's say, in a little thicker point in purple, even though you don't really want to do this on here, this normal force is going to be equal in magnitude to the weight force perpendicular. So when we write the equation for friction, friction, as you may or may not remember, is a coefficient of friction depending on the two materials. Usually it's between zero and one. There are some super duper materials in this world that can be greater than one, but usually it's between zero and one times the normal force. So that means the friction on a ramp is going to be mu times the perpendicular component of the weight, which is mg 
cosine theta. And the, again, the reason we can say the perpendicular component of the weight is equal to the normal force is that this box is not falling down and it's certainly not flying up. So those two are balanced. They are the same. So on an inclined plane, this is the equation. F equals mu mg cosine theta for the friction on an inclined plane. The other interesting thing we can do with an inclined plane where the only force acting on the block is the weight force, the normal force, and friction is we can say that when you tilt this inclined plane up, the force of friction is going to increase. So if I was to go ahead and draw, let's say here in red, uh, the block wants to slide down the ramp, so there's a friction force that is opposing that weight component parallel to the ramp down. At some point, uh, as this incline goes up, the friction force increases until you reach the maximum friction force, which is actually what this equation is. I should really write F max. So we're going to set those two things equal to one another. So on the one hand, you have F max, and on the other hand, you have weight parallel to the ramp. So we're going to take mu mg cosine theta, which is the friction force, and we're going to set that equal to the weight force that is parallel to the ramp, which we've decided is mg sine of theta. Interestingly, the mg's cancel out, and if I bring cosine theta over here, you get mu equals sine theta over cosine theta, better known as tangent of theta. So if you want to know the coefficient of friction between two materials, put one on a ramp as the surface, put the other on a block or some other object to slide down, and just incline the ramp until it begins to slide. The angle at which it begins to slide will tell you the coefficient of friction. This is number three. And just as an example, if um, we were to actually put in let's not do 50 degrees, let's do 20 degrees. If we were to actually put in an angle, so mu equals tangent 20 degrees, so if you incline the ramp and it starts to slide when it reaches 20 degrees, that means mu is going to equal the tangent of 20 degrees or 0 0.36. Notice mu is unitless, it's just a ratio. Um, so these are some big ideas you're going to be using again and again and again on problems like this. You really do need to wrap your head around the forces on an incline. Uh, I do want to say that you don't really want to draw the components on the same picture as the free body diagram. Do those separately if you need to. But you're going to do this so much that you'll remember that the, the components parallel or mg sine of theta and perpendicular mg cosine theta and friction is just going to be mu times n where n is the same uh, magnitude as the weight force perpendicular or mg cosine theta and uh, it is useful to know mu equals tangent of theta.